Hey guys, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, where the proof is in the singing. Uh, this is yet another session. Uh, today is going to be a really interesting one for you guys, especially for you that are looking for more advanced singing information. Uh, it's called vowel modifications, and we're going to go through this. But before we get to that, you know, I just want to do a meet and greet with everybody, say hello, um, and you know, I want to know where people are coming from. So if you guys want to hit me back here in a minute, but um, I'm going to give you a little heads up to where we're going with this, okay? Uh, this is a little more intense than the last. Now, last session, we had a really great turnout. A lot of people seem to really benefit uh, from the open throat technique. And, and as we go through this, I want you guys to know, um, I'm giving you a bird's eye view of this stuff. So it's, there's no way I could take stuff 35 years of information in a one-hour webinar. It's just not going to happen. But what I can do is I can give you the basics so that you understand and grasp the concepts first. And then, you know, like I said, I have a singing course. If you want to get it, you know, I go in very, you know, copious noted detail on, um, you know, these specific uh, subjects that we're covering. So the first thing is, is we're going to talk about vowel modifications. What are they and why do we need them? Okay, that's a very important thing. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, I've seen a lot of other vocal coaches on the internet where they say things like, you know, you don't need to modify your vowels and da 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 and yakety yakety yak. Um, and it's kind of funny because <laughs> um, that would fly in the face of about 250 years of bel canto, which bel, by the way, bel canto means bel is beautiful and canto means singing, so beautiful singing. Uh, so in the world of opera, uh, this has been going on for a very long time. And so for some newbie to come along and say you don't need it is kind of silly <laughs> to me at least. Uh, but I can only give you my personal experience, um, and so we're going to discuss that in a minute. But um, I want to get uh, knock off some of the questions that we had from last week first, because I, I promised you guys that I'd grab those questions and do this, and then we'll dive right into um, uh, going. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to re, re uh, can't over open throat technique first, and then I'm going to get into vowel modifications. But anyway, so the question from the last broad broadcast was Joe Jura High. Um, I take singing lessons from a teacher that explains that many people damage their voice from singing in chest and require surgery, different from your teachings. Who is right? Well, Joe, uh, good question. Um, I'm 54 and I've never sung better. <laughs> and I, like I said, I love this saying because it just, you know, uh, I, I think of myself as like a Jedi master grandpa guy, right? Grandpa has been doing this a long time. So um, you can ask your local coach to sing for you. And you can ask your local coach to show other students that sing and see how they do. And then you can look and see how I sing and how my students sing. And that's the bottom line. The proof is in the singing. So you have to decide if you want to go with someone that can't sing or doesn't sing well and can't display students that sing or someone that has been touring for 30-something years, 40 records out, close to 1,000 songs placed in film and TV, and decide if my information, because um, if my information is good. Not all information is created equal. Um, and so it's very important to, to really understand that. And just because someone says something that they don't understand doesn't mean it's correct. And I'm demonstrating this over and over and over again. So let's move on. To, I hope that helps you, Joe. Um, next question here is, oh, and by the way, if, it's true. If they don't uh, sing correctly and they don't understand good open throat technique and belting and chest and stuff, yeah, of course. Yeah, they could lose their voice. Lots of people do. Camellia, what can I do if my voice is getting tired really quick and my throat hurts? Well, that's a twofold question. First of all, there's no way to really determine that until we can hear how you sing. So my recommendation was would be to go into my singing forums, it's free, um, and post something so we can hear, is it a support issue? Are you using too much air? Are you pinching and squeezing in the throat? Um, there's lots of things that can lead up to that, but I said twofold, it's so, several fold. So anyway, just go in the forums, post something, Camellia, and we'll get you some good counsel and um, get you dialed in. So Marco, uh, Caracas? Caracas, eh? I don't know. Um, anyway, sorry, Marco, if I mispronounced your name. What kind of songs or bands do you recommend to cover for someone who's begin who is beginning uh, and wants to focus on soft rock, much like Air Supply, but I can't get to the higher notes yet? Okay, well, that's a big question. Um, if you're looking to... Uh, by the way, I have a singing course, Marco, and I cover that in my course. Um, R&B guys, or guys that sing of a lighter timbre, still need to have a bright sound. And so you still need to work that bright off vowel, but you just do it with a lot less volume and you actually go into head voice a lot earlier. 
Um, the bummer about that is over time, like I said, is the voice atrophies. If you don't keep the chest voice strong, you kind of lose a lot of your chest voice register if you don't build that up. So um, I have a singing course that covers this. Again, go into the singing forums. We have all of this uh, information in there that will help you. Help you. I want to do some shout outs. Uh, shout out to my notification squad. Thank you guys so much for being here uh, and ringing that bell. <laughs> ding, ding. And uh, so we've got from Spain. The land of Dracula, Romania. <laughs> uh, Anahita from Armenia. Uh, Ada is waving from Turkey. Is that right? Sorry, this is going by my screen really fast. Uh, Stormy Jones from Eugene, Oregon. We've got Paul uh, from Bonnie, Scotland. I wanted to go there actually. Scotland's got some cool. Uh, it's a lot like Norway, and uh, you know, it's got a whole bunch of cool. In fact, I saw a uh, Facebook post on all the different nuances that Scotland has. Luke from North Carolina, woo, all the way from North Carolina, <laughs> Neil from New Orleans, uh, Jeff from Illinois here in St. Louis, and then, um, so, uh, thanks you guys, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I just want, I've got so much to cover today, I want to, yeah, just dive right on in. So, on topic, um, we have something called vowel modifications, and, you know, the first thing is, what are they? How do they work? Are they necessary? And can I just sing? Like, do I have to really go through all this stuff? Well, I'm going to break every one of these down, but I really want to focus on the sequence of this. Now, last week we did a webinar on open throat technique. I don't know if anybody wants to raise their hand and chime in and say, hey, I was there, so I understand it. But there's a sequence in the way that you build the voice. Let me say this again. There's a sequence in the way that you build the voice, okay? And why this is important is because there's no five quick tips to, to getting great at something. You have to build the house first with a good foundation, and then you've got, it's the cornerstone, and then you've got to build your walls and you know, all your pillars and all that stuff, and then you got to put on the roof, and then you start building rooms, which are different components of singing. So, so many people say, no, I just want the, the distortion room or I just want the head voice room, or I just want this room. It's like, no guys, you don't understand. You don't just can't just grab a room and then think that you're gonna be able to just reside in that room and be good at it because there's no support. There's nothing that sustains this. So if we could please start there, this is important. Now I'm gonna bore you for two seconds, but hang in there with me. I promise that the ride will be worth it. We started out discussing about diaphragmatic support. If you don't know what that is, go to my videos on diaphragmatic support, get my course or go on my free singing forums, whatever. My course is extremely extensive and unfortunately in the videos I can only cover very small portions of this and they're very broken up and sporadic because you can't, you can only do so much in a 10 minute video and even in a one hour webinar. So we start with support. Now I want you to remember, hey, 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 we have this real strong supported sound, okay? Then we migrate on into a relaxation response. We're gonna go, wanna go, hey, 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 and get all bound up and tense. We wanna have a relaxation response. So the stomach or the abdomen or the diaphragmatic support mechanism is the engine that drives your car. Without it, you're dead in the water. You can't do anything. So the gal, the one, the one girl here just recently said, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I lose my voice, I go weak and tired. Um, chances are it's a support issue, okay? And so chances are she's also not singing with the right timbre. Until I hear it, I won't know. So it's like a doctor trying to prescribe something over the phone. I got to get you in the office and listen to it. So, but anyway, as we go back to this, so we start building the house with a good foundation, which is support. The second is a relaxation response. The chest, the neck, and the throat. The third is what we discussed last uh, session was open throat technique. The doctor wants to see your tonsils. We did this, remember? We discussed tongue placement. We discussed the uvula. We discussed the soft palate. We discussed all of the key components that go into great open throat technique. As we migrate on from that, we, we're gonna go into vowels and we're gonna go into six vowels and I'll discuss those here in a minute. And I'm going to open this up for questions because I know there's going to be a lot of them. Now, I, I'm going to say this one more time. This is an oversimplification of what needs to happen, okay? Now, I'm not looking to scare anybody, but I'm going to go into, you know, um, it, it, uh, it, it's easy and not easy all at the same time. And I'll, I'll break all this down for us so we can really understand how this works, okay? Vowel modifications go hand in glove or fit hand in hand with open throat technique. Okay, let's say it again. Vowel modifications. First of all, Ken, what is a vowel modification? Sorry, I should have explained that. 
as we ascend a passage or a phrase or a song, as we go up, we can't maintain the size or the girth of the throat at the bottom. Uh, as we go up, we have to pare that sound down to make it smaller. If we can't, we can't sustain the weight or the size of the vowel as we go up, okay? So we have to understand how to pare that sound down. Now, as we discussed also, I'm gonna do a video on vocal fox. It's coming up, so hang in there with me, guys. I know we had a couple of people. Can you please explain my vocal fox, which is, um, my registration or, or what, what range I'm, I sing in. Can I classify myself in, in one range or another, baritone, high berry, tenor, counter tenor, you know, soprano, alto, contralto, and then there's all little breakouts of that, like spinto, and this, there's all, you know, like different voice types that go even within the range. There's the, um, they resonate differently. But anyway, so let's get back to this, sorry. Um, so valve modifications go hand in glove with open throat technique. And so, we, like I said, we start with support, we do have a relaxation response, we go into the open throat, and then we focus on six vowels. And let me explain what those vowels are. Um, there's a, ah, remember we said all vowel sounds stem from it's the la, a, ah, a. Ah. And once we master that a ah vowel, what we learn is that all vowels shift just ever so slightly or subtly from that vowel. Okay, well, what we also know though too is there are exceptions to the rule. Remember in English, you know, I, E, O, wait, it goes uh, A, E, O, Y, U, sometimes one would help me out here. Uh, anyway, the vowels, I obviously can't speak in English, so I've been in Mexico too long, by the way. We've been here for, we're, it's gonna be coming up on three months, so I, I'm losing my, my, uh, my English swag. Um, anyway, and I still don't have Spanish swag either, so don't, you know. But um, a, a, um, a, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. Remember that? There's always an exception to that. Well, that's also true in singing. And in singing, we have a, ah, a, ah. a is a little bit of an exception, e is an extreme exception, o is part of the a ah family of vowels, and u is kind of part of the a ah family of vowels, but we treat it differently. Now, I've talked about the family of vowels, and I want to kind of go through this because this matters as we go through understanding vowel modifications. If I discuss vocal tract shaping, and we talked about this again last week, we're going to cover a little bit more of this today. If you look at my throat, let's pretend we have this giant camera we're looking at my throat. Ah is the largest vowel that we have. Ah, la. It's the la, ah. We've got these cool little bugs here that, love, uh, that want to participate. So they're going to do the ah vowel in a minute. Anyway, la, ah. It's the largest vowel we have. Now, ah is ah, pharyngeally spread. Remember that fancy word, pharyngeally spread, which just means a smile. You're you know, kind of bringing some mask into the sound, and you're ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah. Practice this stuff, seriously. Ah, 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 right? And go shift from vowel to vowel. So ah is the biggest vowel. Now what we do is we vertically close that vowel down and horizontally spread that vowel with a little smile. It's the same feeling in the throat. This is why I'm explaining this. We don't want ah, 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 ah. We don't want big shifts. We want small, subtle changes. So remember, uh, all vowel sounds stem from its la ah. So keep that ah vowel. Ah, 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 ah. Now we're going to move on to a. Ah, ah, a. So we have ah as the biggest vowel. Again, we horizontally spread the vowel and vertically close it down a little bit to ah. A is again vertically closed down a little bit more with a little more pharyngeal spread. E is the, the, the most narrow vowel, or uh, most vertically closed down vowel that we have, that, and the, the widest horizontal vowel that we have, we spread the vowel. Now let's stop there for a minute, and let's go back to a, ah, o, oh, and u. Okay, set that on the table over here for a second. A, ah, biggest vowel that we have. O oh, is like playing miniature golf with, with a. Ah. We just close the, the, we take the same shape of the vowel, and we close it down to o. Oh. Ooh, we take O and we close it down even more. Now this becomes important because if you've heard me say all vowel sounds stem from it's the la ah, you learn that um, within the ah vowel there are two ex two extreme exceptions, e and u. And I always say except for e and u. All vowel sounds stem from it's la ah except e and u. Well, that's true for e. It's not quite true for u. And let me explain. U has a transitional vowel. By the way, if I'm losing you guys, hang in there, I promise. I'm gonna tie this all together, just hang in there with me. I know it sounds, it maybe sound a little complicated. It's really not that, but, but there's a lot to it, okay? So we have A, and then we have O as a transitional vowel. 
into ooh. Let me give you a demonstration of what I mean. Did you hear that? Now, the, the feeling of the stretch in the back of the throat, ah, is still, I'm still singing ah. I'm just closing the sound down smaller and smaller with the same shape of the vowel. Now, this becomes really important as we're going to go through a couple of little scales and exercises, how we actually approach the ooh vowel. So again, we have two exceptions, e and ooh, okay? Now, this doesn't actually pertain to vowel modifications themselves. This is actually just part of good open throat technique. And again, I cover all of this in my course extensively. So, and I walk you through this stuff step by step. So we're going to go through vowels, and I'm going to sing just a couple of them, okay? And let me grab, I have this little Martin backpack with me. <laughs> um, anyway, and we're just going to, do this with me. Now remember, like the doctor wants to see your tonsils. Drop the tongue to the base of the jaw, right? Open the back of the throat, and we're going to drop the larynx a little bit. Remember, we had the whole uh, session on laryngeal positions. We don't want and have kind of a froggy sound. We want to drop it. And then we're going to go to a, and it's going to be a real subtle change. So, you hear how subtle that is? I didn't go. They weren't big changes. Tongue was dropped to the base of the jaw. Throat still open, good open throat technique. Like I said, all this stuff is sequential and it builds on itself. And that's why a lot of times, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but you know, you're kind of singing along and you go, gosh, the other day I had this thing and I nailed it. And then today I just can't sing to save my life. I, I can't get to that placement. I can't get to that feeling in the throat. Well, if you build this kind of muscle memory, you will be consistent as the, as the sun comes up, straight up. So again, let's do it. Ah, ah. Let's connect them. Okay, now we're going to go ah, ah, a. Okay. Did you hear how subtle that was? I didn't go ah, Right? Because the more we have to shift the vowel in the throat, or let's remember I talked about the agility ladder for sports um, guys where they put out that rope on the on the grass and they run through the agility ladder and it's like chicka 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 and they take small fast steps back and forth. They're not jumping outside the ladder going right. They're going chicka 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 the balance ladder chicka 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 chicka. We do the same thing with the vowels. So these are subtle, small transitions between them. Very small changes. So really get that through your brain. Again, if when in doubt, go back to the ah vowel. It's la ah. So again, let's do it together. Notice my tongue didn't move that much. I'm not gagging on the tongue. It's not getting all big and thick, right? So now, as we're going to go ah, a ah, ah, e, e, the tongue's going to recede back in the throat a little bit. It's just the nature of the beast. So we're going to go See my tongue move back a little bit, okay? But if you notice I'm not going e and pinching and squeezing, e is actually part of a, okay? Now we're going to get into some of this. I don't have time to cover all this stuff because there is a lot to it, but I want to I want to uh, uh, encourage you guys with something real quick. And that's this. Um, I started out, guitar was my first instrument, and I, I became a very, very accomplished guitar player. When we learn how to control these vowels and these vowel mods, and we shift from vowel to vowel, and we get the feeling in the throat, and we build good muscle memory for that, it happens naturally. It, your voice wants, your throat wants to go there. Okay, so it's not something like, oh my gosh, I'll never figure all this stuff out. And let me explain what I mean by that. When I was growing up, uh, I learned, I, I learned all the modes in guitar. By the way, you guitar players out there will identify with this. I used to practice six, seven, eight hours a day, and I did this for five, six days a week, and I did it for 20-something years. Great, it's a true story. And you learn Lydian scales, you learn Mixolydian scales, you learn Dorian scales, you learn Phrygian scales, harmonic minor, melodic minor, Aeolian, major minor pentatonic scales, blues scales. This doesn't even include like, you know, all the jazz uh, halftone stuff like Joe Pass or Joe Yorio would do in, in passing tone scales. But why I say that is, uh, and there's a couple of exceptions because there's some other um, uh, hard card flamenco scales or, or Middle Eastern scales that are different. 
But, but, which I love, by the way. Um, but the point, though, is, is that once you learn five, five scales, basically, five of these major scales, all you do is play them in different positions on the fretboard. Let me say this again. Get your brain around this for a second, because I'm going to relate this to vowel mods. Once you learn basically five scales, that's all, five scales. There's exceptions, like I said. It's just a matter of where that same scale is played on the fretboard over what key it's being played in that makes it Phrygian, Dorian, Mixolydian, harmonic minor, melodic minor, you know, Aeolian, so forth. So why that's important is the same is true for the voice. Once you get these vowel modifications, open throat and vowel mods, it's just where it sits in a song and where you're singing in the song. It's all the same. So you don't have to uh, relearn something over and over and over again. Now, it's important to understand too, though, as we ascend a passage and descend a passage or a song or whatever, uh, how that feels in the throat to build enough muscle memory so we don't have to think about it, okay? So in my course, I cover all of this where we go through, run through all of these drills and all these different things that embed this in the throat where it, you just are as consistent as, like I said, the sun coming out. So as we move on, we're gonna go and we're gonna shift from vowel to vowel. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna take that same scale, and I want to discuss the very first vowel mod, okay? Now, it's the la, a. Ah. As we ascend a little bit, and by the way, I deliberately, ladies, I deliberately am doing this in a key where you, you berries and low tenors can sing what I'm singing, and ladies, you can take this up the octave, and the exact same thing applies to you, okay? So, now, again, a small exception to that would be high tenors um, and altos, because altos actually... Uh, or go about three notes lower than a, a lower soprano or you know, a regular soprano. So I can't uh, service everybody's um, vocal fock, but I can get the mean average to give you guys the, um, the flavor of this. Okay, so we're gonna go. La, ladies. La, okay, let's go up the scale and let me show you where our first vowel mod is gonna happen for you guys out there and, and ladies. La, ladies, la, 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 la. Now, guys, you're going to start to feel the pull in the throat here in a minute, where the vowel is so big you can't sustain it. Okay. Now, why this again is important is we're going to pare down this sound to la. Ah, la, ah. We're gonna put a little bit of ah in that sound. Ladies, you're gonna do the same thing. And I'm not gonna re-sing the, the octave up so I don't have to reduplicate this. So just follow me up the octave. Here we go. You feel that little pull in the throat? So if I were to go la, it's too big. Okay? And we're going to get caught. Now, I will say this. Maintain the integrity of the vowel as long as you can until you have to shift into a vowel mod. And I'm going to explain this. Well, in fact, I'll just explain it now. Um, have you guys ever seen a TV show called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I don't know if you... Or, or even Slumdog Millionaire, whatever that movie was called because it was a play off that TV show. Um, there, It was a TV show where they had this pyramid and, and you were trying to like... They would ask you these questions, and, and you'd get, you know, all these um, uh, advantages uh, until you got to the million dollars. And, and the advantages were uh, they would give you, like, phone a friend. They'd give you ask the audience, you know, through that. Uh, they'd give you 50-50 where you got a, you know, 50-50 chance. And you'd use these chits as you go up, and you'd try not to use them as long as you can until you get to the top of the pyramid going for the million dollars. Well, the same thing is true for vowel modifications. You don't want to use a vowel modification too early because you want to maintain the integrity of the vowel as long as you can until you need to make a vowel shift, okay? Now, this becomes even more extreme depending on the style of music that you're singing and or, um, let me give you an example of this. If I was singing opera, and I always default back to that because it's the greatest mechanism that's ever been created to understand how the, all this stuff works. So if I start way back where we just were, and I went, and I was really closed and dark in the sound, well, I'm going to have to shift earlier 
than the guy that opens up his throat that does this. <laughs> Let me give you an example of this. We ended up here. If I went, did you hear me almost go to O there already? I had to shift into a vowel mod because I've darkened, colored the sound so much that I can't open up to the sound and keep that sound as open as long as I can until I need to make a vowel a modification. Well, this is important because if you want to build range, we really need to open up the vowels. And this is what differentiates or separates um, the, what I teach and all of the stuff that I've developed over the last 35 years of teaching and, and doing this, um, to know that if we keep the vowel open, the longer we keep it open, the later we can shift into a vowel mod, the greater our range will be, okay? And it's more of a clear tone too, and, and we, we're not going to sing pop songs of We're just not going to do that, right? We might go We might open up the sound and come up with a more sexy R&B pop kind of thing as we go up. So anyway, let's continue. So we're going to do the ah vowel, and we're going to shift from a ah to ah. Ah, so feel the shift. Don't forget the diaphragm does the work for us. Don't get caught in the throat. That's another thing. Don't blame the throat going into an early vowel mod if it's in fact your diaphragm that you didn't have strength to get to the note. Okay, so you have to constantly play a game. Play Simon says with yourself. Okay, and that means um, that Simon first said, which is me. You do nothing without taking the breath. Without it, you're dead. So no matter what happens after that, make absolutely certain that you use good diaphragmatic support or you're out of the game, okay? And you're gonna have to start over. So again, diaphragmatic support, here we go. Hear me go to that ah? Did you hear that little shift? Ladies, you Right? La a, la a. Okay, now there's several vowel mods that go up, and I'm not going to be able to cover all of them. I'm just going to get this one vowel mod in. A goes to a, a goes to u, and u goes to u. As we, uh, sit, uh, you know, from, a, uh, from the lower position in the scale all the way to the top position and back down again. They happen at the same spots, depending on your vocal fock or vocal type. They happen at the same places in the, the spectrum or the scale of your, of your vocal folds, okay? So like berries, you're gonna, uh, loft usually is around an E, uh, an E4, and then uh, you're gonna feel that shift towards uh, like hook, around a G4, and then you're gonna feel it wanting to go a little more uh, ooh, around an A4, and then it really will appear ooh almost entirely at a C, a C5. Now, here's something a little crazy. Gonna get cray cray on you for a minute. Um, the, for those that want a lot of range, those vowels actually kind of start over again if you're going into the female soprano register. So if you cross chest voice, go in through mixed voice, and you enter the soprano, for me, like this, right? If I go up that high, I get to start my vowel mods over as though I was doing them in the female soprano range or the alto range. It's for this reason in my singing course, when I give you all of these exercises, I give you both the male and the female versions. And there's a reason for that. For those of you that want to take your studies really far, you can start to transition. <laughs> it's kind of transgender singing. You can transition from a, a, your male berry or tenor range, go in through the passaggio, through mixed voice, and start your vowel mods again in the soprano range, so you can go over to the soprano uh, workouts and go, oh wow, where did she cross that? Where did Ken have her cross that? And how did they work? And then all of a sudden you get double the range, okay? It's crazy, but it does work. I'm living proof of it, okay? Let's move on. So shifting from vowel to vowel. So what I wanna do is um, I wanna talk about how vowels, sh we, we just did, um, you know, and now we go from vowel to vowel, okay? That's really important because that's how we're gonna sing songs. We're not gonna just sing one vowel. We're gonna need to transition from vowel to vowel. So I have several exercises that are awesome for this, but before I get to that transitional vowel thing, 
I want you guys to understand how to get into the pockets of those vowels. So there's something called stretching exercises, open throat vowel modification stretching exercises. Okay, now I'm only going to do one, and you're going to want to do a lot of these in different um, configurations because you're not going to just sing one scale the same every time. Every song is different, it's different in different ranges, and again, I cover all of this in my singing course where I walk you through all these different exercises and drills that you run in order to be able to get this muscle memory to embed this in the throat. But I'm going to give you one right now because this is really good. In fact, I'll try to, I'll do two because um, it'll help. So we're going to go, yeah, I'll start out slow. Now, for those of you out there that didn't do my glottal compression uh, uh, session that we did, you might not even make it to the end of that because you might not have enough breath. If that's the case, you can just do one. Now here's what's important about the scale. I'll just start there for those of you that may not have the breath to do the first one that I did. If we go you're stretching like a yawning sensation. You're stretching to get to that vowel. This becomes increasingly important the higher up we go because you're going to need to then get quickly into that vowel mod without having to think about it, okay? Let's do the next scale. So I'll just keep it simple. Next one, ladies, you're up the octave. You feel that stretch? Feel that stretching sensation, right? So we're stretching the vowel. That's what we talked about last week, about that soft palate starting to rise, the uvula starting to rise, how some guy on the East Coast was making fun of that in one of his recent videos on open throat technique. And I'm telling you, if you don't do that, good luck with that. Let's do the next one. Here we go. That's for you guys that wanted to have the one with the breath, so you can try it both, right? I'll do the simple one now here again. You feel that stretch? It was like, like, you can feel it going to the ah vowel, right? Let's do the next one. stretch. Okay, now this is important because as we go through this, if, as we speed this up, when we do this with speed, you know, <laughs> right, all of a sudden we build this muscle memory, it goes into the pocket, out of the pocket, into the pocket, out of the pocket, and we don't really have to think about it, okay? Now, um, I promised you that we'd go uh, do, uh, do another scale. So the same thing applies. Um, so instead of la, you can do another faster version. La, la, right? So you go la, and you can actually go and get that stretching thing to happen faster, okay? Now again, these drills are really important because when you go from vowel to vowel and you need to find that pocket for that vowel modification, you have to know how to get to that and that feeling in the throat. So you actually need to work up all the vowels in order to be able to do that, okay? Now, I won't get time to go through all the vowels. I'm just gonna go through ah, at, and a today because that's all I'll have time for before I open this up for questions. But so here's what's interesting about this. Remember I said all vowel sounds stem from this, the la, ah. You don't really have to change the position that much for a. Ah. Let me do it for you. Let's go back down here. Ladies, up the octave. Let me show you the, the, how close it is to a. Ah. So it converges at the top where at is really awe with a smile.
Let me say it again. A is just a, the feeling of a with a smile. We're not making big transitions. The reason I want to add a into the mix is because it's a little bit of an exceptional vowel, and I'll get to that in a minute. But come with me again. Let's do a. a la, now let's do the fast version. A la, I mean, that was the fast version. Sorry, let's do the slow version. That was a la, Let's do a la, Here we go. A la, Are you remembering your diaphragmatic support so you're not getting caught in the throat and starting to feel fatigued in the throat? Because the abdomen does all the work for us, right? Let's do the fast version now. Hear me do that little bit of a shift to the ah. Here we go into that stretching space. Now again, why is this important? It's important because we have to close down the vowels in order to be able to maintain. We're not carrying up so much weight up top and so much girth in the sound that we're able to pare down that sound, okay? Now, here's why, again, it's so important. When we sing a song, I want you guys to practice your songs using no consonants. I don't care what the song is. And try to use contiguous phrase singing that we discussed in last, uh, last session where you're connecting the vowels back to back. Now, here's how we can start to build muscle memory to build these vowels in two directions. Oo, o, a, a, and e, and then a, e, a, o, and oo. Now, why is that important? It's important because we have something called the path of least resistance within uh, vocal tract shaping. So here we have la, a, 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 e, o, and u. That's the way it looks in the throat, right? So when we go from one vowel to another, we want to try to get to the closest related vowel. That's what I mean by the family of vowels. So a is the most closely related to a. Okay, I know this sounds complicated. Hang in there with you guys. Like I said, I cover all this stuff in my course. I'm just giving you the bird's eye view of this. But it works, big time. So, a is the biggest vowel we have. A is the most closely related to a. A is the most closely related to a. E is the most closely related to a. Let's go back to a again. Remember I said exceptional vowels. A, o. Of a, o, and u, o is the most closely related to a. And u is the most closely related to o. Ken, I'm confused. I should write this stuff down. I know, like I said, I have a whole chart of this. I have a booklet uh, in my course where I map all this stuff out for you guys. So, in other words, a, ah, o is more closely related to a, ah, u is more closely related to o as we close the vowel down. So, what does that mean? It means that when we practice, we want to practice a sequence that gets us to the path of least resistance to the most closely related vowel from one vowel to another. Now let me give you an example of this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do u, o, a, e, e. And I'm starting on u because it's the most closed vowel. Now on the bottom of this scale, we're gonna start with a because it's the la a. We have to set up the throat for a or we're gonna get stuck and we won't build that muscle memory. So I'm gonna go do u, o, again, remember u is the most closed in the a family. It's the most closed. So u, we're gonna open up a little bit to O, U, O, then A, and then E, or A, and then E. See how the chain goes where they're the most closely related? And then we're going to work this thing backwards. And, and we have, like I said, I have all these drills that you do in order to be able to accommodate this, but I'm just giving you one right now. So we're going to go, starting on the A vowel, good support, relaxation response. Closely, those are related. Let me do it again. Listen really closely. I'm not going, ooh, oh, ah, hey, he. Right? They're really subtle and they're really close. Ladies up the octave. Did you notice I'm not 
shifting my jaw. Everything is happening in the back of the throat. Let's do the next one. Next one, here we go. Now, for you tenors out there, this becomes increasingly important and the vowels have to be even smaller the higher up we go. So if I'm way up here, you know, I'm not going to make the vowels that big. I'm going to pare them down. See how small it was? I know. Right? I made them small because the higher up we go, the more we want to pare those sounds down and the more closely related they become to each other. Okay? Now we're going to do the reverse direction. We're going to go le, a, e, a, o, and u. Now you think, well, wait a minute, Ken, why aren't we starting on e if it would be e, a, a, if you're really trying to look for path of least, least resistance? Glad you asked. Because the E vowel is a little too tough and you get caught on the E, it's a really hard vowel to sing. So we want to start with an open, more of an open vowel first. Le, E, A. Now you'd think, wait a minute, Ken, you just said that the E is the farthest away from the A vowel. That's right, I did. So what we're really singing is A with E in it. Okay, this is a vowel mod. So if we go, if I were to go, you know how big that transition is? A lot of people yodel when they do that, just like when they sing ng, hung, hung, they go, and they'll yodel. They'll have that, that break that happens in the throat. So we're really going to sing like the number eight. We're not going to sing pure E. We're going to go down here. Next one, see how closely related they are? You see how that works? Now again, the more we practice this, and the more of these drills that we do, and these are just the basics, guys. This is just really one-on-one -on -one basic stuff. But it helps set up you to understand how these mods work. Now, as we use these vowel modifications, and A has its own set of vowel mods, E has its own set of vowel mods, U has its own set of vowel mods, once you memorize the scales, like I told you about in guitar, and by the way, those scales really help me because it helped me a lot with pitch and it helped me to really understand intonation to get in and out all these modes. But once you learn how to do this, and it's going to take about a year. I mean, there's no shortcut out of this stuff, right? Once you do this, though, all of a sudden you just become uh, unconscious competent. Remember we talked about um, unconscious incompetent in, the, uh, in a previous session? Then we talked about... Um, Conscious incompetent. So unconscious competent is, you know, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know how to get there. Conscious incompetent is, I know what I want to do, but I still don't know how to get there. Conscious competent is, I know what I want to do and with some elbow grease and some sweat equity and some, you know, some drive and some effort, I know what I want and I know how to get there, but it's still, I have to think about it. Unconscious competent is, I don't have to think about it anymore because I built up so much muscle memory, it just happens naturally. And I, then I can turn my brain off and focus on other things. This is the stage I'm trying to get you guys to as we run these drills and do these things. So anyway, guys, I want to open this up because we're actually already like 45 minutes in and I want to make sure we get some questions out because I'm sure there's a lot. Uh, so let's let's open the forum up to some questions and uh, uh, let's hit it here. So um, Varun, opera singer and teacher Michael T said, in Belcanto, airflow and support automatically lifts the soft palate. Um, actually, that's not true, um, Varun. Um, I don't know who Michael T is, and I don't really care. Uh, we have to work at it. Um, we actually literally have to work at that. And 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 it's not that if you forcefully or intentionally lift your soft palate, uh, then you need to change vowels. Um, it's that when you uh, understand how to keep the throat open, understand a, a little bit of a lowered laryngeal position first, and as you ascend and descend scales, you can actually train the soft palate to do that without forcing it. 
And the greater the space in the back of the throat, um, the greater your ability to uh, maintain a nice big round sound without choking or pinching and squeezing off as you ascend or descend the passage. By the way, another important thing, as we go up and we use this vowel mod, or two or three, you know, la, I just went la, a, uh, ooh. La, I actually reopen that sound on the way back down because we never want to cover or color or darken a descending passage. We have to reopen the sound so we set ourselves up again for the next passage we want to sing. Otherwise, it's like when I showed you when I sang a dark, la, when I'm already covered in sound, I can't reopen the sound, or it's very difficult to reopen the sound to get up in our upper register. Pierre Bennett, I've been doing the course for three weeks. I don't quite understand what's going on with the vowel mods, but pitch and tone sound, sound like you, and when I look in a mirror, everything seems to be doing correctly. I just didn't quite understand the technique. Well, <laughs> uh, Pierre Bennett, you're only into it for three weeks, so if all you get is support and the ah vowel, it's the la ah, you're doing great. So start there, ask these questions in the forums because we got some killer qualified um, moderators in there that can help facilitate giving you answers. You're welcome to record yourself, post it in the forums uh, so that you can get good feedback on that. But just stay, don't even worry about the vowel mods right this second. It's a bit premature. You've only been doing it three weeks. That's like saying, I went to the gym and I noticed I'm starting to get a little stronger, but I don't have quite the muscles of you. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> do the gym for a while, and then we'll see how your muscles work out. Off-topic questions, and I'll do this. I don't want to get too off-topic, though. So, uh, Ink King, on reviews, people say the KTBA program will only work for um, people who have a high range. Is that true? It's not only is it not true, not sure what reviews uh, you... Uh, send us where you see those reviews, because we'd like to see that, uh, if you wouldn't mind, Ink King, uh, send it to KTVA Help, which is Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, well, KTVA Help at gmail.com. Um, if, if I'm a baritone, listen to, listen to my speaking range. Oh, listen how low my range is. Oh, right? If I'm a baritone, how is it possible this could only be true for people with a high range? It's exactly the opposite. I help people with a lower register gain range, not just take people with a high range and, and, t and take credit for it. So again, la right? What I do, like three and a half octaves or something just now. So um, and you notice there was no break, register break, it's all usable range. Um, so that should tell you that those reviews are not correct and hopefully um, you, I'm, the proof is in the singing. Bitter Bear, uh, when I sing with my band, my voice always gets hoarse towards the end. Uh, we usually use this by playing songs, twist and shout, but I'm worried this is hurting my voice. Are my fears founded? Absolutely, Bitter Bear, you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, there could be lots of factors, and one factor could be support. Another factor, you're using too much air. Another factor, you're over singing because the band is too loud. Um, on and on and on and on. So, uh, other factor, like I said, when you're using too much air, you don't know how to compress that air and sing with a bright timbre to help you through this. So, uh, again, because there's so many uh, factors in there, yes, you could damage your voice, but we have to get to the bottom of why it is that uh, you're going hoarse and what's actually causing it. Danny White, ESP, hello, Ken. I usually have difficulty uh, with, the, with the notes belted because it seems I do not even understand open throat. Uh, how can I know how to do it right? Well, Danny, like I said, I have a singing course that I walk you through all this stuff. So um, it, it, I, I go back to, again, understanding good support. If you can't afford the course, no big deal. Go on YouTube, at least look at my short tutorial on diaphragmatic support. Do that for a while, do the scales with it, um, and then move on to the bright timbre of it's the la ah. And then this will start to get you on the fast track of helping you um, not hurt yourself as you're going through a singing belting. Ink King has another question. I can do exercises now up to an A4 in full voice, uh, still can't sing above an F sharp four in, in, in songs in full voice. Um, again, so let's talk about that. Um, just because we do scales doesn't mean it is an immediate practical application to singing, okay? So if you do a scale, and you're able to get up to a certain note value, but you can't um, actually integrate that into singing, that's because the throat closes down. Remember last week when we talked about glottal stops and we talked about when the throat closes down, you have to reset up the ah vowel? Well, because every time you close the throat in a word phrase, all of a sudden you haven't built up enough muscle memory to know how to keep the throat open. What I recommend, like I just said a minute ago, is sing songs with contiguous phrase singing. Try to connect the vowels themselves and try not to stop. So 
you know, let's, let's, uh, I did Journey's lights last year. When the lights go down in the city and the sun shines. Ready? I'm going to keep my throat open here. No, I go. Oh, yeah. So I'm keeping my throat open and I'm not closing down for all the consonants so I can start to again build muscle memory to keep that open. So I only add enough consonant sound as I need it to be able to hear the lyrics, okay? Uh, Tony M. Live, what is the best way to shed the weight uh, in your voice making it thinner? Okay, now thinner, don't use the word thinner. Say com com compressing or um, uh, um, uh. when I think of the word thinner, it's like, like eh, that's thin. If I think of compressing or making the sounds like hey, you know, so I'm not going. I'm not seeing this huge note. I'm closing it down to an ooh vowel. So this is what I exactly what I'm talking about, Tony, is utilizing these vowel mods so that we can compress the sound as we go up in order to be able to sustain. Um, not seeing too much weight as we go up. Luke, I've watched your other videos, but I don't quite fully understand uh, how to link the passaggio for the lower voice types like a baritone. What vocal warm-ups would, would be good to train the passaggio? Well, there's quite a few. Um, it's not one thing because you can't only do one thing, but let's do this. There's something called sliders, and they help a lot. And the reason they help is because as you're going through a slider, as we sing a scale, and you want to sing scales because that's what you're going to be singing. You're not going to be singing a slider, but you're asking a question. I'm going to give you one answer. Again, I cover all this in my singing course where there's multiple uh, exercises that really need to be done in order to accommodate and uh, acquire this. But if you do a slider, a slider is something like this. We go, and remember, we only sing as loud as we can connect without hearing the break. So let's go a lot higher now. Let's go. Did you hear me go from chest, head, and back? Right? We go up the scale. And you want to go up and down that passaggio to where you don't hear the break. Again, with the bright tone that we've discussed, because if you don't have that bright tone, remember we talked about head voice where you had to work head voice to a nice bright tone to match the sound of your chest voice? Well, we have to do that first, and then we do these exercises. Let's go a lot higher. Vowel mods still apply. You hear me going through the passaggio without hearing the break on into head voice and back down. Now if I go, Right? We actually want, though, to get to where we can start to do scales in the sound because that's how we're going to be singing. We're not going to just sing a very legato, portamento note that just is a big, long, stretching exercise for the throat. But we can start there. But again, remember, only sing as loud as you can connect before you hear the register break. So if you have to do it really quiet, and then as you can build up strength in the sound, Right? And then we start to build, build, build that strength, and then we move on to scales. Pamela, I really enjoy listening to Steve Perry's usage of vocal modifications. That's actually vowel modifications. Uh, and usage. Uh, he can take one vowel and change it into a word. That's right. He does it all the time, and he's a good example of that. He didn't use full command of all the vowels, though. Uh, he went, he, he liked the oh, 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 oh sound a lot, which leads me to another point, guys. We had a... Um, a lot of requests for, hey, will you teach me twang, okay? And I don't want to go into all of twang. I'm just going to go into one part of twang. Twang is predominantly, though there's other things, me, 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 and all these other exercises that are done, it's the E-H sound, eh, like lead. And the reason this is done is because you can get a nice piercing tone in your head voice especially, and uh, you can develop a nice bright sound off of this one vowel. Well, that becomes problematic because remember all vowel sounds stem from hits the la, ah, and it's very difficult that if you've embedded only one vocal tone in the throat to transition from that vowel, eh, from a eh, it's very hard to get to that ah vowel. And so what people do is they sentence themselves to one vowel tone because they can get somewhere quickly um, and they can get a lot of power and a lot of shrill and a lot of range, and, you know, a lot of um, resonance out of the sound. But I'm telling you guys straight up, you have to go through all of the vowels. Now, it is true when you're working your head voice, 
um, you want to start with smaller vowels, I recommend the E vowel to start with, and then OO. So, and work those vowels first, then take on the E or E sound and go through all of the vowels. Ah, it's hard to do up top. Because you have to actually kind of start on a vowel mod. We're not going, we're not real open in sentence. Almost, uh, ooh. Right? Because the vowel is so big, whereas E and ooh are, are more forgiving because they're smaller sounds and you don't have so much girth in the throat. Laurel. I know Tom Petty was not the greatest uh, vocally, but it sure would be great to hear a shout out to the legend. Tom, I loved his songwriting. I loved his stage presence. Um, I, 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 I love what he did for the industry. A legend indeed, I agree. Uh, Myth M. Myth M. Uh, what is the proper definition of vocal resonance in contemporary music? Is that ring only for opera? Absolutely not. And by the way, resonance, we've discussed this too because when we talked about vibrato, I went into this and I cover all this thoroughly in my singing course, big time. This is a huge component of my course. Is we, I say ping is king. Okay, I coined some phrases. It's la la ah, ping is king, you know, etc. When we have that nice bright ping, and let me give you an example of what you're talking about for opera. Remember I said you could darken and cover a sound when you're singing, uh, let's say I'm a baritone, I'm a... Right, and that's the ah vowel. Right, and it's kind of like, real covered sound, right? Well, if we open up that sound, and bring a little mask into that sound, we can get the same ping with, an, with a more bright, resonant sound, using a little mask to bring the sound farther forward and contemporize the sound. The ping is the same, it's just we get more range. As I said earlier on today's session, we get more range if we open up that sound. Chris Carolyn from Ireland, uh, kind of off topic, uh, but can I grow low bass notes as well as, oh, absolutely, sure. That's what I talked about. Again, uh, in the open throat uh, session last, week, uh, last session, Go check it out. I show not just a lowered posi uh, uh, laryngeal position, but a dropped laryngeal position of how you can really get into like, you know, uh, barbershop quartet notes that are down really low. Now, a caveat to that. If you're working your upper chest voice, and we have what's called little boy voice, that I've, another phrase that I've coined, like, like Michael Jackson, where your voice is set nice and high, you either have to let the voice set to drop first, the larynx to drop, and into a relaxed state in order to be able to go down and get those notes or start the stretching uh, exercises right away uh, when you first get up in the morning when your voice is already really set low and you can stretch that voice way down into low baritone tones. Omar, Ken, student of yours here in the song Stone and Love by Journey at 129. I'm having trouble in this section of the song, mostly with Never Fade. Okay, Omar, could you please post that in the forums and Bob, uh, my assistant who's listening, um, if you can't answer the question, can you forward me the question uh, so that I can help um, Omar? Uh, Ricuerdo, how much do steroids affect the voice and are, are there any that you would recommend? Absolutely not. I re recommend no drugs whatsoever. The only thing I would recommend for the voice, two things I'd recommend for the voice, is taking collagen because your vocal folds are made of collagen, types two and three, by the way. Uh, you can get one, two, and three, because one is also um, for joints and, and, and skin and, and whatnot. But you can just take collagen on an empty stomach. Uh, be careful, because your hair and your nails are gonna grow really fast. Um, but that helps, uh, especially retaining the moisture in the cords. Um, also, um, glutathione, you can take glutathione capsules. There's different types. Um, in fact, I have a video on this. You can see it, I forget what it was. Maybe Bob can put it in the notes. Um, where you can, if you've damaged your voice or if you feel like uh, you maybe smoked a lot in your life or drank too much alcohol or things like that, um, this will help you with that as well. Uh, last question, here we go. Um, uh, Leonidas, uh, during these exercises, I had no troubles ascending the scale, but, not, but even though I felt I had plenty of air, when I go down to the scale, my voice cracks and goes away. Well, that actually sounds to me again like uh, a support issue um, or you're maybe trying to sing too, with too much girth in the sound, or you're using too much air, but cracks usually come from people not sustaining enough strength in the sound. So my guess is that you're not using enough diaphragmatic support. So again, please post in my singing forums. It's free. Get free advice there. Anyway, God bless you guys. Good shout outs. Uh, remaining locations, guys that have tuned in, Ramon from Oregon, uh, Leon from Singapore, nice. Uh, Rick Barnes from Florida, uh, Shauna Marie from San Francisco Bay Area. We've got Q uh, Joanna from Sunny, uh, Sunny Greece, nice. 
I love Greece. Uh, I'm going to go back again someday. Daniel from Miami and quite a few others. Shami from Bangladesh, Steva from Germany, Ashra from South Africa. Awesome that we get so many people from all over the world wanting to learn about The Voice. DHS from Dubai, Tim from Sweden, Andrew from Russia. God bless you guys. And I will not be here this Wednesday. Um, I've got a, I'm taking the week off, and I will see you guys again next Saturday, same bat time, same bat channel. Peace out.